Howdy, guys. We're gonna. I do want to take a quick ch chance to just recognize uh, how impressed I was with Pat Casey. Uh, I got the opportunity to sit here and listen to him in his press conference, and obviously we go back a, a long way. Shoot, years old when I came here, and actually got a chance to play new graduate assistant uh, after playing. And, you know, he's just the epitome of what we want to be here at Oregon State. The guy, uh, the way he develops players on and off the field, just talking about a true competitor. Um, and it's just so impressed over the time of watching that baseball program get to a level it did. Um, and so I think it's a, a great day for him. And just I was, I was pleased to be a part of listening to him. And uh, the guy's a class act. So we wish him well with all his future endeavors. Um, couple things I know I'm going to ask about the like injury update. Uh, so on AP, it's going to be at least four weeks on his elbow. Uh, so he won't, be, he won't be available for a minute. Bradford, we're hopeful but not certain for this Saturday. Um, it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing, see how it's feeling toward the middle to the end of the week and see if he can get some practice time in to be, a, be available. But those two guys, that's kind of the update there. Um, Couple of thoughts after watching the tape, Southern Utah wise. Um, again, you know, first half, the fr fast start. I thought our old line came to play in the first half. You know, um, not just in the run game. Like I thought our pass protection, what I felt on the field, and then watching the tape, those guys did a great job of giving them, giving the quarterback some time. Um, and then defensively, you know, you look at that first half as just the one big play. A guy, guys are playing assignment football, being able to make some plays. Second half, I felt like we just got to grow in our start in the second half. We got to get off the field. We had opportunities to get off the field in the third quarter defensively. And then offensively, we got to stay on the field. I mean, you look at the time of possession in the third quarter, it was just killing us, defense being on the field. So, again, some things to learn from there. And we got a great opportunity this weekend. Um, I think our guys will be excited. This is a tough place to play. Nevada is always a tough spot. I've been there a couple times as a coach and a player for that matter. Um, but it's always a tough you know, environment. And I you gotta have a great week of work to get ready for that. Um, but it's an, it's an awesome opportunity for us. You know, finish the non-conference, continue to improve and compete against a good football team that's tough to beat, uh, tough to beat at home. So we're excited about it. Fire away. Your kind of mission in those third quarters, it had happened at Ohio State too. Of course, two long runs, you know, doesn't let the offense have the ball much. Yeah. How much of that maybe, you know, you, you had a new quarterback in and each to start each of the halves, just maybe is that part of it where you're just trying to get something new going with somebody new under center? I think a little bit in this last game in regards to, you know, Luton went out there. Uh, we did play a couple of our other receivers. You didn't see the starting three in the second half and that, that played to it a little bit. But we feel good about those younger guys getting in there, you know, uh, and we got some guys that make some plays. Tino had some catches and did some things. And so I don't really see the quarterback change being a huge piece of the second half issues as much as our ability to compete and, and play well for 60 minutes. With Artavis, like you mentioned, being out for about a month, will you guys then turn to Jamar to kind of be that workhorse guy? Do you anticipate maybe some other guys in the depth chart getting some more reps? Or? Yeah. Uh, you know, Jamar's going to get some carries uh, for sure. But at the same time, I'm just not into just having one back featured back, especially this early in the season. I think those guys can get weared out, worn out. Too many carries early in the year, you know, it can cost you later in the year. So we're going to need another guy to step up or two for that matter. Um, we've got some guys, you know, BJ had some carries in the game. Uh, Case has done some, some good things. He had a really good camp. He's already gotten in a little bit on special teams. And Christian, uh, those, those three guys are going to be a, a, in addition to Jamar. What do, you, what do you remember about recruiting Jamar? Yeah. Um, I think initially we had seen his tape. <laughs> I got a call from TJ Hushmanzada, who's down in that L.A. area, and this guy played it, and he's like, dude, that guy can roll with the ball. So when TJ's telling you, it, you, you follow up on it. Um, I remember the home visit. We go in there, and we get the crew. It's myself, Petrie, Greg Burns, Lingren, all of us are there. And the mom's got like two degrees from USC. And she's like a huge Trojan fan. And so we had the title battle and talk a little bit about that. Um, but, uh, you know, we just kept pressing the vision on him. Talk about the great backs we've had here before that have come really from outside of Oregon. Um, and we felt, felt great about getting him.
From a, when, when you're bringing in freshmen, is, is running back one of the positions you feel like is the one of the easiest to just jump right in and play at the college level? Because yeah. there's not a ton of Right. I, do, I, I wouldn't describe it as easy to play as a true freshman, but I would say it's easier than maybe trying to play quarterback or right tackle. Um, there's still a lot asked of those backs now. I mean, it's not just turn, carry the ball and kind of find some things. There's protection that goes in. There's footwork that goes into it, ball handling. You know, you got the ball. But uh, it's definitely easier than trying to start a true freshman quarterback. What's What's been your just two games in the offensive line? That That's – is, is that the most improved position on, on the team from spring to, to now? I mean, they're definitely improved. I don't know exactly what position is the most improved, but we've been pleased with those guys. They've been working hard. We were counting on some of their experience to pay off early in this season because we were going to be playing a bunch of young younger guys different spots. And I think those guys have, have improved and played well. Um, I like the group as a whole. I don't think we got a standout in one guy. I think the you know the five slash six of them really were playing six guys. They've uh, they've been steady and uh, and and have improved from what we saw last year. Jonathan, how are guys like you know Jeremy Reichner, David Morris, and uh, you know just kind of progressing? And Noah Togi, the guys with the short ear injuries, are they making progress? They are making progress. I don't anticipate any of those three guys this weekend, but we are hopeful moving forward in the next couple of weeks to get to get some of those guys back because those guys can play. Uh, you, your thoughts about the, the push that the defense got. It seemed like uh, Helbig had a lot of time, something you're, you're seeing on film. Yep, yep. We got to find ways to uh, and get around the quarterback more and then bring him down. You know, there, we had a couple opportunities to bring him down and we got to finish the thing. Uh, you know, some of that is, you know, we're, sometimes we're only rushing three guys and that's why he's holding the ball because we got a lot of guys in coverage. Um, but we do need to... Uh, find ways to continue to work at creating a pass rush, and then when we get home, to be able to wrap the guy up and finish. You guys start with Ohio State, really powerful team. You play in FCS Southern Utah. Not that they're bad, but do you feel like this week is maybe one of that really good test where you, you know, you're not facing that, that elite team and a, a, t you know, a team from the lower level to really give you guys a better gauge, too, of where you guys are at? Yeah, I think that uh, these guys um, – are not Ohio State, and uh, but they're they're going to be a test. And so again, gauging where we're at, I just think well, I want to find out where we're at we, that one week, and then again go to the next. Um, but I do know this is going to be a tough challenge. This place can get rocking. They've got some players, they score some points, um, so we're going to need our A game to come out with a win. What do you remember about the '99 game he played in Nevada? I remember the field was not very good. I th you know, the, I think they were on grass at the time, but they had to fill it, like, with sand to, like, something was going on with that. I remember hitting naked to Marty, a uh, naked pass to Marty down the sideline that really changed the game. Again, that, they had a huge crowd. Uh, the crowd was good. The energy was good in the stadium. Uh, I remember that part. I remember having the first experience with Dennis Erickson on the sideline in a game. <laughs> you know, so that was, a, that was the first time because that was his first game, too here, um, those things stand out. Speaking of that, two games uh, in the books now as a head coach, what's your sideline demeanor like? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Are you a yeller and a threatener and no, a screamer? Not, no, not yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, not yet. Uh, I do, I, again, I'm on the headset. I'm listening to our coach's coach. I feel great about that. Uh, I like our body language and the atmosphere the kids are having when they're not in the game, cheering on the guys that are on the field. I think that's been a, that's been a positive, but defining my demeanor, I, yeah, I don't know. And what does uh, Nevada do? What do you got to do to win? What do they like to do offensively? They, they can spread you out offensively, and they, they, they like to run the ball. They do a good job with that. I think the, uh, the defensive scheme is unique. This isn't something you see week in and week out with what they're doing. Um, and so that can create some problems, especially up front on identifying who's the fourth rusher, fifth rusher, the movement. They do a lot of movement there. And that's why I'm saying I, we got our hands full. I mean, there's a lot there from the atmosphere to the scheme to they got some players. Um, it'll be a good challenge. 
Jonathan, we talked last Thursday about how, you know, you weren't too worried about the team, you know, needing to learn how to win again, especially, you know, coming into this last weekend. Oregon State hasn't won on the road since 2014. Is that anything you kind of have to address, or is it kind of just business as usual in that regard? You know, we talk about uh, the ability to focus when you go on the road, the added distraction that comes. We talk about bringing our own energy on the road because we're not playing in front of our home, home fans. But... Uh, you know, our outlook is so much about what's coming and how we're working now, and that's been our approach from day one, not, you know, not dis disregarding what's taking place before, but we're not. We're learning from it, and then we're moving on, and so it won't be a, a huge point for us. Again, we've got to prepare and bring our own energy in this road game. I'll go with the weekly quarterback question. What, <laughs> where, where, where are we at this week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, after watching the tape, I thought both guys really did some good things. Uh, and so I feel good about where we're at with two guys being able to move the ball. And I kind of like continuing this. We're not just going to name a guy. You've got to kind of work through the week and see who has a good week of, week of work. I mean, the, the, the whole body of work counts. Like Jake came out of, the, out of camp uh, being the starter, got the first opportunity. Got, you know, unfortunately, we got it, could, had to come out of the game. Connor's gone on and done some good things. And so, and I even watching Jake in the second half, he, he did get some good things. And so we'll make that decision at the end of the week after, uh, after the practices. And uh, again, I feel like we've got two guys we can move the ball with. I, I don't know if, I, I can't remember if you specifically addressed Noah, but how, how the freshman tight ends play? Because I, I would think the tight ends are kind of a big part of your, yep. your offense. Uh, yeah, I've been um, impressed with those guys. We throw a lot at them. I mean, you think about tight end play, they got to run a route. They got to be a huge part of the run game, and then they got to be in protection some of the times. Plus, we move those guys a little bit pre-snap. I've been impressed with those two kids of how they've handled it. They have not been perfect by any stretch, uh, but they're battling out there. And so Tegan and Smalls, um, if they just keep working, those guys will improve. Um, but overall, I've been pleased. Yeah, he, he, not counting on him this weekend. Timmy Hernandez has kind of been all over the field. He's holding. He's been a wide receiver, obviously. But he had a huge block with Jermar the other day. Can yep. you just talk about what he brings to the field? Yeah, we pointed that out again in the team meeting. So Ohio State, you know, AP, long run. Timmy's right there making a critical block. Shoot next game, same thing. I mean, and so – and it's not just been Timmy. I think that whole group has understood that their value of making touchdown blocks is there. I mean, even Timmy, like, he's on kickoff return, battling out there. He's not the returner. He's out there trying to make blocks. And so um, he, he's a huge part of the whole team of what we're trying to get established. There was a, a feature done on Pac-12 networks. I could only <clears throat> see the video, but it was on Hernandez as, like, an aerospace genius and mechanical engineering and everything. That's amazing. I mean, uber, uber smart. Does that come through in meetings, and does he, or does he kind of keep quiet and oh, no. to himself? He's a, smart aleck. he's a huge smart aleck when you talk to him. Um, but he is, he is bright, and he can play all kinds of different positions. He knows what's going on. Uh, he's a great kid. He really is. And, uh, you know, he's one of the leaders of the team. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he's been great. When, when you looked at the, at the video from last Saturday to Ohio, from Ohio State, Specifically, what were a couple of the improvements you made defensively? Was it did they just line up better? Or? I, our front seven was way down on mental mistakes. They were lined up properly. They were in their proper gap. We didn't always make the play, but the front seven was drastically better than week one. That that stood out on tape. A true freshman made a great tackle for loss, John McCartan. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen in John and that, that play in particular yeah. to, get your, to get the ball back. You know, he's playing that outside linebacker position where his length counts, you know, he, to holding the edge in that particular play. He's, that's exactly what he's doing. Um, you know, I think Tibbs does a great job with those guys of just continuing to develop because, he, like you're saying, he's a true freshman. Uh, John makes the batted field goal, you know, and so – the contribution he's made and a lot of those guys have made. Uh, I really like that outside linebacker room in general. You know, with Anjay, the way he's playing, Ham's running to the ball, Key, you know, can do some things, and then Tago, that, that group as a whole, we like the, the progress there. Jonathan, when you talk about recruiting Jamar, <laughs> you saw all the USC stuff. 
in the recruiting business at the end, I mean, you can deal with a lot of things near the end of a process. You, from what I understand, you did with Jamar when a lot of people really came in hard on him, but he must have had, felt good about coming here. He did. He had a couple other options show up late for him, like the last week before the signing date. And, uh, you know, we had a few guys like that, not just, not just Jamar. Um, so, you know, this recruiting thing, that's why it's 24-7 all the way until they sign. And, and again, we just feel good about that class we were able to put together. But I'll also say, and I've told this to the team, is like I feel good about the classes before that. Getting around these guys now, it's like, you know, we got to focus. And, yeah, we're excited about some of these freshmen. I'm excited about some of these guys in the locker room that are juniors and seniors of, like, you know, I lived it of – coaching changes and different assistant coaches and you're not just one particular head coach guy and then there's another head coach's guy. We're all beeves here. And I think that message is coming through to the I'm I'm excited about our juniors and seniors too. The naked bootleg to Marty Mauer, do you remember, you know, that you're down fourteen to thirteen in the fourth quarter when yeah. you hit that to give you the lead in that game the last time you played down there. Do you remember the play pretty clearly and, and who you know did you check into it? Was it called or what? No, it was. Yeah, he's the nub tight end, so there's no receiver outside of him. Fake it to the left, roll to your right, dump him the ball, and then he takes it to the house. And it's like one of those play Marty just keeps talking about like he's fast. He's not. <laughs> you know, Marty was at the game. I didn't get a chance to see him. We had a bunch of guys back to the to the game, but um, yeah, he took it to the house, and he's never forgot it. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple things, Jonathan. Uh, real quick, anything new on uh, Landry Payne? Nothing new. We've been working on that, but uh, at this point, he is not, not good to go. And then secondly, you know, you just mentioned it a few minutes ago with the juniors and seniors. Just from when you got here, you know, in the end of November until now, how much have you seen kind of these, these older kids, uh, uh, in addition the younger kids, grow and just grow with the system? And like how you said when you first got here, wanted to build that trust and kind of ingrain that trust. How is the team kind of getting on that now that they're, you know, won a game and you're yeah. two games in? I appreciate them. I know that. Because it's, you know, anytime a new crew gets in here, it's just different. It doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just different. And the way these guys have uh, adapted and, and worked and, um, you know, tried new things and new schedules and new ways of doing things, um, I've, uh, I've appreciated their effort. And, you know, it, it was impressive. So we go to Bend, and the night before the little scrimmage, we had every senior kind of talk, talk about their experience and, and what they've learned, really speaking to the younger guys of what they've learned along the way. And it's an impressive group, man. These guys have been through some things. We've got some impressive guys that have graduated already, uh, are going to do some great things in the future of what their plans are. And so it's a, it's a good group, man. Been through a lot, and, uh, and we're hoping it'll, it'll go well for them this year. One last from me, Coach, and that is Jamar Jefferson. You said his tape was good. Did he show the kind of patience that he seems to have? I mean, he's obviously got other tools, but some of those runs, the patience to wait for blocks and all of that, is it, did you know that that was in him? Yeah, I mean, we saw some of that in camp. Again, I go back to this offensive line doing some things now, and uh, you're going to have some patience in the hole. Well, the thing's got to stay covered up, and those guys up front um, did a good job of that. Um, and so – you know, he's got patience. The old line's covering things up, and then we're getting some perimeter blocks to break some of those long runs. Um, that's how, that's how that played out. Hey, coach, I think you answered all the questions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.